Hi everyone, I'm Karen from the Peace Discipline channel where you can learn more about nonviolent discipline. In today's video, I'm going to share a question someone once asked me that made me look at difficult child behavior in a new light and change the way I approach discipline. This video will be relevant to parents, to teachers, and anyone else who works with or cares for children. Many years ago, as a student teacher, I selected a module which turned out to be an excellent practical training in how to prevent and deal with child abuse. In the first session, we were asked, what is child abuse? The first few examples weren't surprising to me, but then someone said, smacking is child abuse. I now know that this is true, but back then, in my early 20s and having grown up in a country where corporal punishment was normal, I was not accustomed to thinking of smacking as abuse. In my surprise, I raised my hand and asked the facilitator, Shifra Jacobson, but what if the child is naughty? Doesn't a parent have to discipline them? Instead of giving me a lecture, Shifra asked me a question in return. Is the child naughty? Or is their behavior just very inconvenient for the adult? Wow. <laughs> When I look back at that moment, it's like I can literally hear the cogs in my brain going clunk, something shifted. Is the child naughty or is their behavior just very inconvenient for the adult? I had never thought of that. And now situations were flooding into my head and I was seeing them through a new lens. For example, if a toddler touches everything in sight and ends up breaking something, that certainly is upsetting for the adults. But is the child being naughty? At the toddler stage, the child's instinct is to explore the world. And so touching everything in sight is actually developmentally normal rather than naughty. The child is also too young to understand what is valuable or fragile and doesn't have the coordination yet to handle things with the necessary care. They still need adults to watch them, make sure they're safe and take anything fragile out the way if necessary. Here's another situation. A child wants something that the adult doesn't want them to have and cries because they can't have it. This is inconvenient for the adult. But if we think about it, there's nothing wrong with wanting something. What's more, feeling upset because we can't get what we want is a normal human response. Rather than getting cross with them, children need adults to be there for them when they're upset. Crying is something adults often try to stop, but it's not actually bad behavior. To find out more about how to deal with children when they cry, you can watch a previous video called Tools for Tears. What about picky eating? That certainly is exasperating for the adult. But is it bad behavior? Perhaps it's a sign that the child is really sensory sensitive, smelling and tasting things that other people wouldn't even notice. They may be trying not to gag rather than trying to be difficult. Distraction and forgetting things will really bother adults. But do we stop to think that both of these are involuntary? In other words, nobody gets distracted or forgets something on purpose. Small children have no sense of time. And if they make you late in the morning, that certainly is very inconvenient and frustrating. But is it really their fault? Or do the adults in the picture need to make some adjustments, like getting up earlier or helping them more when they're getting ready? It's inconvenient for adults when siblings get on each other's nerves, but actually it's really understandable that siblings don't always want to play together or that some sibling situations are difficult for children to handle on their own. So instead of yelling, why can't you just play nicely? Perhaps we could find out if they need our support or some space from each other. By temperament, some children are highly active or very curious, wanting to explore everything. This can be exhausting for their parents. Some children are super social, wanting more playdates than you can manage, while others are really cautious and introverted. Perhaps your child is not naturally tidy. Even that is a temperament factor. In other words, it's inborn. All of us will find certain temperament characteristics difficult, but that doesn't mean the child is naughty. ADHD behavior in the classroom is really inconvenient for the teacher not to mention disruptive for the rest of the class. But is it naughty? Actually not, because ADHD is a neurological condition which causes children to struggle with a lot of typical classroom expectations. These children 
need support to do better rather than punishment and negative messages about themselves for things that they can't help. I could give more examples, but you get the picture. Many child behaviours are inconvenient for us, but not naughty on the part of a child. Realising this can change our approach to children. Instead of getting angry or punishing them, we can be more understanding and give them the support they need. But this video wouldn't be complete if we didn't consider that sometimes you'll ask this brilliant question only to find that your answer is yes, actually, in this case, it was very naughty. What you're probably referring to here is that the behavior seemed willful, defiant or disrespectful. And of course, sometimes it is. But even if that is the case, there's still no need to hurt the child. Shouting, threatening, shaming, humiliating or any kind of physical punishment are not active ingredients of good discipline. In fact, they often model the very things we're trying to get the child to stop doing. Thankfully, there are more effective non-violent discipline tools which we can use to guide children and hold them accountable. For example, if they've just hit someone or said something really disrespectful, you could give them a timeout. In this way, you're teaching them limits, showing them how far is too far. Then, when they've cooled down, you could guide them to finish the unfinished business caused by their behavior. To go and apologize to someone, clean up a mess they made, or make amends in some other way. In this way, you teach them how their behavior affects other people and how they have a responsibility afterwards to put things right. I like the suggestion to treat children as though they are good, even when they've made a mistake or done something wrong. The behavior may be bad, but the child is not. And even bad behavior can be handled effectively and calmly with nonviolent discipline tools. So we should approach children as though they need support or guidance rather than as though they're bad. There are many situations where child behavior is difficult for adults, even though the child is not doing anything wrong. So next time a child does something really frustrating, ask yourself, is this bad behavior or is it just really inconvenient for me? Let us know in the comments how it goes. Shifra, if you ever watch this video, thank you, not only for asking me this question, but for a truly excellent course that affected me profoundly as a student and influenced the rest of my working life. That's all for today. I'll be back soon with more on nonviolent discipline. Press like if you found this video helpful and if you haven't already, then subscribe. If you'd like to find out more about nonviolent discipline methods, keep watching these videos and check out the free discipline toolkit on peacediscipline.com. These resources are made to promote safer environments for children, so please share them with others who may find them helpful. Thanks for watching.